Hello again. Today we're going to create some black and white images. So I recently did a live stream. It was supposed to be a sunset live stream, but it ended up clouding over. Okay, so we didn't get any color whatsoever. So rather than pack up and leave, I've decided that I'm going to still take some images because I find that dull overcast days tend to make some nice black and white images. So for anyone new to the channel, I am doing regular live streams where you'll see me out in the field uh, taking photos, working the conditions, I'll run through camera settings, I'll run through composition, and then I'll do a follow-up stream where I will show you all of my raw files. So you'll get to see every photo that I've taken, you'll get to see the photos that work, the photos that don't work, um, and I'll just kind of explain why certain images don't work. Okay, so in this case, yeah, very gray overcast day. So the plan was to do a couple of long exposures and convert them to black and white. Okay, so I'm going to break this up into two parts. Part one's going to be for Lightroom and part two will be for Photoshop. Okay, so they're very similar, but Photoshop just gives you a few more options. So we'll get to Photoshop eventually and I'll leave a, a timestamp in the uh, timeline. So if you just wanna see the Photoshop version, switch over to the Photoshop version. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to show you how we do it in Lightroom for starters. Most of what I do here in Lightroom can be done in Photoshop via the Adobe Camera Raw. So keep that in mind as well. If, if you are a Photoshop user, this might be worthwhile because I'm not going to cover this part of it in Photoshop. I'll cover a different part of the black and white tool. Okay, so the simplest way to convert this to black and white is just with our black and white tab. So underneath the basic tab, We've got this little black and white. Click that, simple black and white. The whole point of this channel is simple and effective, so I'm not going to go too in depth with black and white. I'm just going to give you some ideas um, and show you some of the tools that we have available in Lightroom. That's a very simple, that will just take the color out of the image, convert it to black and white. Our next step, if we just want to go a little bit further, underneath our profile, so still in the basic tab, You've got these four little squares here, and this will open up all of our camera profiles. Okay, so you'll probably find that by default, it will probably be on the Adobe Raw profiles. So this is where we have our color profile, our landscape, neutral. Okay, and they're all just basically starting points. Okay, um, underneath that, you'll have your camera profile. So whatever your camera has as the profiles, and generally they're all the same. There'll be a faithful, a landscape, a portrait, neutral, etc. If we come down one further, we start to get all of these little profiles as well. Okay, so if we click on the black and white one, you'll see there's 17 different profiles and each one is slightly different. Okay, so scroll through them and you might find one in there that you like. Okay, so that one I don't mind, that's kind of the look we're going for. But yeah, you've got all these different profiles. And as you can see, that one really affects the sky and brightens up the water. And they're all starting points. So if we just click on this one as an example, and then if we close that down, it hasn't adjusted anything, okay? So it, it hasn't done any adjustments. All it is is a starting profile, okay? So I'll show you the way that I like to do it and just explain it as I go. So what I'm going to do is reset it back to back to default and then just select the black and white tab. Okay, so yeah, have a look at them. There might be things in there that you like. Um, otherwise, this is how I do my black and whites. So first thing, similar to all my other images, I'm going to bring down my highlights and lift my shadows just to get some more dynamic range into the image. Now, I don't take my shadows up too much. I generally keep my shadows under 50%. And same with the highlights, sort of around about that 50% is as far as I'll go. I'm going to bring my whites down a little bit and blacks up a little bit. Now, I know there's a lot of people that like to get a white point and a black point at this stage. Now, I don't like doing that. And I'll quickly explain why. So you know, a lot of people will tell you if you hold the Alt key and then you bring your white point up until you start to get some white in the image. Okay, so you bring it up to about there and then that'll start to put some white into the image. Now, I don't like to do that because I'm still going to do other adjustments, okay? I'm going to start playing around with contrast and I'm going to start playing around with some adjustment tools. So 
that's going to affect everything that I do here. So I save that until last. I introduce my black and white at the end of the process rather than at the start of the process. That's why I like to bring my whites down because then what I'm doing is finding detail in those white areas. Okay, if we go up too far, we start to lose detail. I'll just turn the clipping warnings off for now. But yeah, if we bring up our whites straight away, we, we start to lose detail. Okay, by bringing our whites down, we're starting to see a bit more detail that we have in the image. And that's the way I like to start. I like to get as much detail into our image for starters and then start to introduce our black and white. Okay, so for this image, because it's a long exposure, I do prefer that softer look. So I'm actually going to take my texture and clarity down a little bit to make it look a bit softer and a bit more dreamy. Okay, essentially what I'm doing is creating a flat image and then I'll start to introduce some contrast as we go. So now I'm reasonably happy where that is. I've got plenty of texture in our sky, um, softened it down a little bit to make it look a bit smoother. Now I'm going to start to add a little bit of contrast. So the global contrast slider does a good job of just adding a little bit of contrast. So I'm just going to bring that up a little bit. And again, it's affecting our whites and our blacks. So now I'm going to put my clipping warnings on. And the big one is the tone curve. So the tone curve is where you're really going to notice a lot with your black and white. So now I want to find my white point. And what we have here is this one up the top. This little slider here is our highlights and this one is our shadow. So as an example, if I grab this one and bring it in, it's going to make our darks darker. Okay, so it's going to bring black into our image. If we grab this one and drag it inwards, that's going to bring white into our image. Okay, so this is how I adjust my black and white point. I do it through my tone curve. And I'm just going to bring this in and now I'm looking to see once we start to get a little bit of white, Okay, just until it's not clipping. Um, and same with the black. So now I'll bring my black point in until I start to get a little bit of black. Okay, so it only needs to come in a tiny bit. All right. So now I know I've got blacks and I've got whites. And then finally, we're just going to add a very subtle S curve. And again, that's just going to essentially add some contrast as well. And that is about it. That is a very simple and effective way of converting your image to a black and white. So if we have a look at our before, okay, very flat, no color at all. And now it's just got a little bit of punch to it. So now it is a technically a black and white image. As a final step, I would probably just crop it a little bit. It's not quite center. We'll just get the image in the center. Um, somewhere around about there looks good. Okay. And lastly, with Lightroom, just another little thing with editing uh, black and white images. If we come down, normally this is your color mixer. As soon as you convert an image to black and white, your color mixer becomes a black and white mixer. So for example, if we wanted to bring down that, the sky, the sky is too bright, we want to get some texture back in that sky. If we come to our black and white mixer, and if we have a look at our before image, you can see that there's a slight tint of blue in the sky. There's a bit of green and yellows in the water but there's definitely blue in that sky. So if we go back to black and white, come down to our black and white mixer, knowing that there's some blue in that sky, if we grab our blue channel and bring that down, what that's going to do is darken all the blues in the image. Okay, so I'd suggest you don't go all the way, I'm just sort of showing you as an example. But then we can just sort of subtly bring that down. Now we're starting to add a bit more texture into our sky. Again, don't go too far, just sort of bring it down until you start to get a little bit of sky. Rather than using the sky tool, I find that especially with black and white images, these sliders can be good. Okay, um, if you had, you know, if your image had a slight orange glow to it, then the oranges can bring down the color of your sky. So play around with these because these will alter your image a bit. Um, and as you can see, just by bringing up that yellow slider, okay, we're introducing more bright tones to the image. Okay, the orange as well. Play around with these sliders and then you a little bit more refined as to where you're bringing in your blacks and your whites. And that's about it. Okay, that's you don't need to do a lot in Lightroom to get a nice looking black and white image. And that's the way I like my black and whites. I like my black and whites to be black and white and not gray. 
okay if you want that sort of that gray washed out look just take your contrast down okay take your contrast down and then you get sort of a, a more a neutral black and white okay i do like my black and whites to be black and white okay so personal preference there's some tools there to get you started um, but yeah that black and white slider here that gives you a lot of control over where you introduce your blacks and your whites that's it for Lightroom. Uh, now we'll move on to Photoshop. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at Photoshop. And if you skip past the Adobe Camera Raw bit, so the Adobe Camera Raw is exactly the same as Lightroom. So you can edit it the same way there and then bring it into Photoshop. But we've got some other options in Photoshop that just give you a little bit more control over your image. Okay, so this is our raw file. And I've just brought it in with no adjustments at all. Okay, so we're going to do all of our adjustments in Photoshop this time rather than through the Adobe Camera Raw part. So if you skip the Lightroom bit and you want to see how it's done in Adobe Camera Raw, go back to Lightroom because it's all exactly the same. But what we're going to do is we're going to do this in Photoshop this time. And down the bottom right hand corner, we've got our adjustment layer. So this little circle, the half black, half white circle, is our adjustment layers. If we click on that, there's an option in here called black and white. So if we click on our black and white, it's going to convert the image to black and white, and you'll see this little box appear. This gives us a few different presets, so very similar to the Lightroom presets. Um, they're, they're more so profiles as a starting point. And if we just click on our very first one, for example, and then we can just arrow key down and it's just going to cycle through all the different black and white presets. So this is, a, once again, you just find one that you like, and this is just a starting point. Okay, so I kind of like that one. I think that one's a good starting point, and then we can just close that down. So there's our original image, and now we've converted it to black and white. And okay, so now that we've converted it to black and white, what I like to do is come down to our adjustment tools once again, and I'm going to go to my levels. And the levels are now I see the histogram. So now I can see my black point and my white point. So I'm just going to bring my white point up until I get it to, to white. So I'm getting the uh, white point right to the edge and the black point kind of similar as well. Okay, just bringing that in a little bit. So that's going to add some contrast. Um, and as you can see, it's just sort of brightened everything up. But now we have a black point and a white point. Like making it more black and white is kind of the key to this image. So the other image was fine as it was. It just needed a straight black and white conversion. This one, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce black and whites to certain parts of the image. So now that I've got it kind of at a starting point, I'm going to flatten my image. And what I want to do is darken down the sky. Okay, the sky is just a bit too bright. I think it's, I like to have a dark top and bottom of the image. So we're just going to darken down our sky a little bit and I'm just going to press Ctrl and J on the keyboard to make a copy. I'm going to come up to Filter, Camera Raw Filter and that's essentially going to open it back up into our starting point. Now I'm going to bring down my highlights all the way, whites all the way and all I'm looking at is the sky. Okay, so I don't care what's happening down the bottom, I'm just looking at my sky going to add a little bit of contrast and just bring down our exposure again. And for the sake of this video, I'm going to overcook it. Okay, I'm going to overprocess it. Because now what I want to do is just introduce some of that sky into our starting image. Okay, now again, there's lots of different ways of doing it. This I just find this is very simple and effective. Okay, now that we've got our dark exposure, what we want to do is create a layer mask. But we want to invert, we want to hide this layer so then we can start to bring little bits back in. So if we click on this layer mask and press Control or Command and I, that's going to invert the layer mask. So now we've blacked out that darker exposure. So if we go over to our brush tool, make sure we're on a white brush. So just arrow keys um, or X on the keyboard will alternate between black and white. And we want the brush opacity down very low, so around about 10%. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And now with a white brush, what we're going to do is just paint in some of that darker sky. Okay, and as you can see now, we're just kind of darkening the top part of that sky. 
And every time we brush, it's just bringing in a little bit more and a little bit more. So it just gives you a bit more control than in Lightroom. Okay, so now we've gone from there to there. We've just darkened down that sky a little bit to make it look a little bit nicer. I don't like having that sky so bright. Okay, so that's starting to look a bit nicer. So once again, I'm just going to go to Layer and Flatten Image. So that's a better starting point. Now to bring in our blacks and whites, this is the way I do it. Now, similar to Lightroom, there's no right way, there's no wrong way. This is just the way I like to do it. What I'm going to do is come down to my adjustment brushes again. I'm going to choose my levels adjustment and I'm going to grab my whites and I'm going to bring them up until I can start to see them blowing out. So if we have a look, let me just close that for a second. If we zoom right in on this water, because all I'm looking at is the white parts of my image. And if we double click on these layers again. Okay, so this is our levels and I'm bringing this up until it starts to completely blow out. Okay, and I'm just going to get it to that point where it's sort of just, just before it blows out. So we're bringing in lots of white. Okay, so now similar to what we did before, we're going to press Control and I on that layer mask. And again with our white brush and our opacity down nice and low, I'm just going to make my brush a bit smaller. I'm going to paint those white bits and that's going to make the white bits whiter, if that makes sense. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to crank it up a little bit and just so you can sort of get a better idea of, of how it's doing it. So I'm, I'm just making my white parts whiter is essentially what I'm doing. And just by painting on that layer mask with our levels adjustment, there's before and there's after. So see how we're really bringing in that white water. Okay, now what I'm going to do is create another levels adjustment layer. So again, levels, and this time I'm going to darken everything down a bit. Okay, so this time I'm really just looking at the sky, these rocks in the foreground, and again, just sort of darkening it down until it doesn't go completely black, just until we start to lose a bit of texture. So somewhere around about there, and once again, control and I, so we've inverted that mask. And then once again with a black brush, okay, if we just want to darken down that sky a bit more, we're just going to paint, paint into the darker areas or paint the areas that we want to darken. Okay, I do want to darken those rocks a little, um, even add a bit of vignette around the corners of the image. Okay, so then there's before and there's after. We've just added some black into the image. Okay, so if you've found that you've gone too far, you can just turn the opacity of it down. Okay, same with the whites. If the whites have gone too far, just turn the opacity down. Uh, but that's how I like to do my black and white. Okay, get the image very flat for starters and then just bring in the black areas, bring in the white areas and get it somewhere. So then I have a much more black and white image. Okay, and then finally, just as a final little check, we're just going to check our white point that we do have a white point. We'll just bring that in ever so slightly. And again, just add a tiny little bit of an S curve and that's just going to boost the contrast even more. Okay, so now we've got a literally black and white image. Okay, so that's about it. That's, that's how I like to do my black and white. So hopefully that just gave you a few ideas. Again, there's no right way and wrong way. I'm just giving you some ideas of how you can create a black and white image. More importantly, turning a dull overcast day into something a little bit nicer, okay? Rather than just, you know, pack up, go home, it's overcast, we've got no color. Create some black and white images, okay? Black and white images, people love black and white images, and with a little bit of work, you can make them look really nice. Okay, so hopefully you found something useful in the video. If you did like it, please leave a like. Feel free to subscribe. If you subscribe, you'll see when I go live and I will hopefully be going live again soon. It's a bit, as you can see from this image, it's, uh, it's a bit gray and overcast and a bit wet up here at the moment. But yeah, hopefully next time I see you, I will be live again. And until then, thank you again and I will see you next time.